as if you might burst. You feel very excited and you can't wait to say it. Abby? Yes. It's just so much easier to get the kids' attention um, by having the having a smart board, having something up here, uh, showing a video, um, having them, they are just more interested in coming up and, and writing on the board and doing different things. When might a group of animals huddle together? You tend to use it probably the most in math, and one of the things that is I have found really helpful is that there are a lot of things online that you can access, lots of different places, lots of different teachers who have, who have you know, posted videos online. I can teach equivalent fractions in my way and tell them how, you know, what makes sense to me, but sometimes just having another person explain it to them, someone else to explain their way may make sense to three or four students that didn't, my, my way didn't make sense to them. Multiples of three, she wants to find Equivalent fractions, she can change these to multiples of three, right? Someone on a, on a screen is also just more engaging than I am. It's just the, the truth of the matter. I can stand on my head, but if I if they think they're watching a video, then they're just going to be more likely to pay attention. I still think there's value in that math book and looking at things in the math book and in um, you know writing things on a worksheet, but it gives another... Um, aspect to it gives another um, piece that they can um, look at it. Some questions for you, and you guys can come up and circle the right answer, okay? One thing that is, is so much better that I do use it for is if we're doing any kind of group writing, if we're writing something together, maybe we're writing a poem or um, putting together a paragraph or something, I can be typing that up and they can see what we're writing, and, or I can have sentences up there and say, okay, where is the, you know, what, let's, let's edit this, what can we change? So that has been something that I've used a lot for. Opportunities. Opportunities are chances to do something you want to do. So what are some opportunities you have? If they can come up and manipulate on the smart board, they just, they just enjoy it. It's just more involved in, um, interactive for them and they enjoy it more. Start section on the next screen and begin working. Well, at the high school and at the junior high, we do the ACT Aspire, which is kind of a pre-ACT test. Um, we've administered it for two years now. This will be our third year. It tests the same subjects as the ACT, but the students are interacting on, in an online format. Most of it is still multiple choice questions where you're clicking an answer. However, some of the um, advantages of the technology is when you're reading a passage, um, you can manipulate the screen, you can change colors, you can highlight. If you're a student who needs an accommodation, there are built-in supports just to listen through earbuds to have it read to you that way instead of having to have a one-on-one -on -one setting with someone else reading to you. Some of that makes test taking a little more interesting and a little more interactive. Any sort of standardized test makes them somewhat nervous, but I feel like you put a Chromebook in front of them or you get them in front of a laptop and they're just more at home. You don't even have to tell them about the tools that are available, they find them themselves. The teachers can monitor the progress of each student throughout the test, they can watch that way. Probably the teachers and the proctors are having more of a learning curve than the students themselves. Coding requires a different kind of thinking. Um, the students are going through sequence of events, they're then breaking down those sequences into loops, and then they're, lo they're learning through games. So the kids really love that part. It's all critical thinking. They're having to do all this, and then they have to realize that there's more than one way to go about this. And they're carrying that through, not only with code and technology, but everyday life. They're carrying that on with other subjects as well. It's something they relate to, like Flappy Bird, Angry Birds, Minecraft, all those things. There's even a course for. So if this is something you enjoy, okay, you can do that at home, you can do that in your free time too. It's not your typing, it's not your um, just Microsoft Word, your Google um, Docs. It's something brand new to us. So the kids really jumped on board, they ran with it, and that's awesome to see. Look at that. Bye. See ya. Have a good day. Today's awesome, wonderful topic, we're going to discuss triangles. Get your lines set up and we'll be ready to talk about triangles.
In a flipped classroom, what a teacher would normally do up in front of the room with a screen or the board is screenshot on an iPad or a laptop where they just record what you're doing. So you still see the teacher's movements on the board. And that becomes a video that the students watch and that's their homework. And on example A, every single side has that tick mark. Do you see the black marks there? So this means all three sides are the same length. So what you would normally do inside the class is their homework, and what they do inside of the class are the problems that you would normally assign. They go home and do 20 problems. The students come in, we go over at the end of the video, there's a couple examples they have to try, so I know they watch the video. They, we go over the answers, they ask questions, and then I assign, it could be a worksheet out of the book, and they work on the problems. You know, they're struggling, they have time to get help from me during class. If they are stuck, they can go back, review the video, and uh, get their questions answered, practice for a test, and I have had nothing but good reviews. I now know exactly where every student is. And that has uh, just transformed what I do. It has totally flipped it around, <laughs> to pardon you know, that expression. What are you guys making? Oh. Chainsaw. <laughs> They're learning um, different ways that to use energy and force and the terms that go with it. The more, the more stiff, more stiff that it is, the more force, you need force that you need from that chainsaw to get to experiment you know, and try new things, and it does. It just helps expand their thinking and teaches them by doing, you know. Um, I think it, they own it more, you know. It becomes uh, more meaningful to them. The hands-on um, materials that they use, and um, it just teaches them more about how things, you put things together, how they work, how to make them stronger. That work? Kinetic energy, it's the energy that's in motion. It's not just a textbook thing, but it's actually manipulating and learning by doing. And I think that sticks with them longer too. They remember things and then they can relate it to different parts of their life, and things that they're doing today and in the future. I really think if they really like it and they're really interested in it, then they know, you know, what, what can they do to grow in that area, what steps can they take in order to make that a possibility later on. I just love to see, I just love to watch them put these things together so quickly, you know, they're just so good at that. And then there are ideas that they come up with to change when they get, when they get to just do what they want and what they come up with to change, the, all the possibilities. And uh, it's fun to watch them because they're having fun. There we go. There we go. working on our rainforest animal research project and so students have researched the rainforest animal using the Chromebooks and finding different websites and different information and then once they have found their information they write uh, an essay about that. Once students are done typing their paragraph then using Google Docs we will collaborate the students and I online and maybe providing a, a short little mini lesson to them using um, the technology and the collaboration. Just having the mobile cart technology like we have with Chromebooks, instead of having to take the class to the computer lab, schedule that, having the mobile technology has allowed us to finish projects in a more time efficient manner. Instead of it dragging out over a period of weeks, uh, now a lot of times we can finish a project in under a week. It's helped kids learn to be independent workers and to uh, motivate them to find answers on their own. Before technology, you were limited to print resources that you had on hand in your classroom, in the library, or what you could find and afford. 
now with Chromebooks and technology, um, our availability is endless. Divided by one third. So basically, one group comes to me for instruction. The other group will work on a program that we have purchased, which is called the iReady program. And that's a computer program where they are on their own level, exactly at their level. In fact, I have one that's on a, this is fifth grade, and I have one that's on a first grade level. The student learning in my classroom is definitely more focused and it's more individualized. Students are able to work on activities that meet their needs the most, and they also use an online program on the areas that they struggle in. So Abby had a good way to try to figure this out. Okay, instead of just picking one, she took the four and she started opening. Well, I know it's not this one, and I know it's not this one. I am now able to work more closely with my students on the areas that they struggle in, and also with my students that need more of enrichment, I'm able to plan activities that fit their needs the best. So we work about 20 minutes, and then we flip. They switch groups. So they aren't always in the same. Sometimes they're always, you know, they might always be in the top math group if they're really good. We do this in math and we do this in reading. On the map, what uh, geometric figure is suggested by each town? I also get to use that data from the online program just to help shape my lessons. Cool. And so then I can see, okay, well they did this today and they didn't do very well on it. I get to work more closely with each of my students. And so I get to learn more about them. I get to help them. Um, in their areas that they need. I think it has really helped them, you know, and sometimes they try to get into the upper groups and sometimes they're just, they feel actually more comfortable if they're not in the upper group because they don't have to go as fast. They don't, they don't feel as stressed if they aren't done as fast as somebody else. I get to know every individual kid. I know their strengths. I know exactly the ones that are having trouble with their facts and, you know, and when you've got 20, if you had 20 kids, you just don't know each kid as well individually. And I didn't really think I was gonna like it. So, <laughs> so when they first told us, like, oh, you know, I've done it this other way forever. And so I really do like it. All right, good. All right, now look at the next figure. Look at the one, the next figure on the bottom. The definition will come up and then the choices are on your screen. Protecting people from number two. Respect for life. Yeah. Oh, option four. Yeah. I'm very fortunate that I have a Chromebook cart um, in my classroom, so all my students have access to Chromebooks every day, all period long. They can collaborate on different projects, um, we can use it for review games, um, I actually use it for um, both formative and um, summative assessments. It gives them a voice so that um, if you ask a question and you're checking for understanding, um, each student is able to actually respond if you're using you know, the Chromebooks. You can push out a question on Google Classroom, they can all respond, then they can even reflect on other people's answers. I like that it gets everyone involved, it engages them all, um, gives them an opportunity to be self-reflective as then they compare their answer to other students' answers. I've definitely had to become more creative. I find that when I'm using um, technology, when I'm using the Chromebooks, um, it engages the students more, but they're actually learning um, in a more efficient way. And so I have to come up with more activities, more opportunities for them to learn. Um, I'm learning as much as they are as they're discovering um, new opportunities to, to grow and to understand um, church teaching. I'll be able to put this link on Google Classroom and you can practice at home. So if you didn't do so well, you'll have a chance to redeem yourself.